October, as you know, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now, most of us have been affected by the disease either directly or indirectly. Now, the most important screening test for breast cancer is the mammogram, and that's what we're talking about in today's Living Healthy. We welcome in Dr. Spears, a radiation oncologist with the Cancer Center of Hawaii. Hello, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So let's talk about the mammogram. Um, at what age should someone start getting the mammogram screening? That's a great question. The recommendations have actually recently changed. In 2011, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommended annual mammogram screening for any woman over the age of 40. However, now, in 2016, the U.S. Preventative Task Force recommends biennial, or every two-year, mammogram screening for women over the age of 50. So women between the ages of 40 and 50 still have the option to undergo annual mammogram screening. However, they should be aware of the increased tests with radiation exposure or the potential for overdiagnosis and overtreatment that may offset that benefit. Okay. It's, it's so it's good to talk to you today because recently I was up for my mammogram and they told me over the phone you don't have to get it this year you could wait you could wait two years and I thought well why wouldn't I get it this year <laughs> you know I remember my doctor saying I should get it every year so so the guidelines have changed the guidelines have softened and a similar movement is taking place with patients with prostate cancer for example where they're recommending PSA screening for you know men that are of younger age much less frequently. Okay, so when would someone get a mammogram earlier than 40? So I recommend them for the following populations. Uh, for patients that have BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutations, for first degree relatives of patients that harbor those mutations, patients that have had prior chest radiation, and really patients that have family or genetic syndromes that increase their risk of breast tumors. However, you know, patients with prior history of breast cancer should continue to undergo mammogram screening. And anyone really can use a risk calculator. A great one is at uh, www.cancer.gov backslash BC risk tool. Okay, when you say risk calculator, I'm envisioning a money calculator, but that's not, <laughs> that's not what you're talking about. It's a little about. bit different from that. <laughs> um, it calculates, you know, they ask what your age is, um, whether you've ever used hormone receptor therapy in the past, if you've had family members that have had breast cancer. So all of those contribute to your risk of having breast cancer, according to data that we have from the population at wide. Okay, so there might be some 39-year-olds watching right now, and um, they've never had a mammogram before. Can you, and, and I've done it a few times, of course, too, but can you kind of describe what happens during a mammogram screening? Sure. Um, so essentially, and this is going to sound like a much more brutal experience than it is, uh, they have two plates and they compress the breast for a very short period of time, 20 to 30 seconds. And that compression flattens the tissue and allows scary things like tumors or calcifications to be better seen. They take an x-ray from multiple views and a radiologist looks at that and grades it for abnormalities. And if there are any areas of concern, they may order a diagnostic mammogram to really hone in on those areas or get a biopsy. Okay, so yes, it is uncomfortable, but it is quick. Yes. And the payoff, you know, just having that peace of mind is so important. Now, I'm gonna ask the question that I'm sure a lot of viewers are wondering, <laughs> and I've never asked this question before, I've never heard it asked on TV. If you have small breast or big breast, is one less painful than the other to I do the screening? I think we as women are very protective of our breast tissue, and I think it can be uncomfortable either way. I think there's more tissue with larger breasts to compress and so it's not doesn't feel like it's pinching as close to the body but this is what I hear from my patients I have yet to actually go through the process this is all secondhand okay we're almost out of time but a lot of people when they think of uh, breast cancer or, or even the removal of breast double mastectomy um, celebrities come to mind Angelina Jolie being one of them can you kind of comment on what she did what her decisions were and why she did it sure so the BRCA mutation is something that's been highly touted in the news, and that's a mutation that is present in 2 to 4% of the population. So the actress Angelina Jolie actually found that she was a carrier of this mutation, and she had had several family members who had passed away from breast and ovarian cancer. So she decided on a prophylactic double mastectomy and a prophylactic salpingo-oophorectomy, which basically means having, <laughs> your, having your ovaries and your fallopian tubes removed. And 
and she did that as a preventive measure and wrote about her journey in the New York Times in an editorial piece. And really interestingly, after this piece was published, BRCA genetic testing doubled. But the percentage of BRCA mutation carriers didn't change. It still remained 2 to 4 percent. So that suggested that the other half of the population that seeked testing after that piece was published were being reasonably tested. However, I want to stress that what a woman does with that information if she finds that she's a mutation carrier is entirely up to her. So, you know, we can treat breast cancer patients that have BRCA mutations with breast conserving surgery. So a mastectomy is not a requirement. Right. And, you know, it just depends on your personal threshold for close medical follow-up and managing the anxiety that comes with that information. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the thing I would mention, though, is that I recommend that any BRCA mutation carrier discuss with her doctor, you know, possibly getting a prophylactic salpinga oophorectomy because this would decrease your risk of breast and ovarian cancer, especially in women that don't want to have children in the future. Yeah. Doctor, thank you so much. I could talk about this with you forever. <laughs> so interesting and, and obviously very important information. But well, thank you. We're out of time. Me. Thank you. Thank you.